میتونم سعی کنم یاد دارم. Testing, testing. Can can everyone hear me? All right. I see. I see quite a number of you guys uh coming in. All right. We got Tari. We got John. Hey, nice to see you again, John. We got Leia, Roberto, Anaros. Okay. Nice to see you guys. I'm gonna send a message. I'm gonna send a message in the group chat. All right. Um. Please respond if you're able to see it. Right. Uh. Please respond if you're able to see it. Hey, Yamilu. Nice to see you. Once again. All right. All right. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is that when you are responding in the group chat, instead of the responding to hosts and panelists, you can actually select the drop down and select, you know, uh, to everyone. Right. So that way everyone will be able to see uh, your messages and also see the questions that you ask so that, you know, it's a little bit, uh, people have a little bit better idea of the questions they are asking. Right. Uh, in, um, in, um, in case you're curious about each other's questions. Anthony, nice to see you too. All right, all right. Seeing quite a number of people um, streaming. This is good stuff. All right, we're just going to give it a few more seconds, a few more seconds before we begin. Hey, Sumit, nice to see you. All right. Once again, yeah, if you can, if you can just, um, I'm not sure how you can, yeah. If you can, uh, select the drop down and send the messages to everyone instead of host and panelists. All right, yeah. So you can see each other's messages. Okay. Now, um, if you are able to see my screen, where is it? Just give me a second. Q and A. Okay, I, I I see some of you guys uh posting messages in the Q and A question answer. Right, nothing wrong with that. Right, but just that we have quite a number of windows that we're monitoring. So if you can send it under the webinar chat. All right. Okay. Yeah. So today's session. Right, today's uh, I'm not able to check every option in the chat box. Okay, I see. I think I know why. <laughs> okay, I I've I've just uh changed the the setting so that everyone can select that. Can you try again, Sumit? Right. Um. Okay. Nice. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Sorry. I just I didn't realize that I need to change the setting for that. All right. So, guys, today's session, today's session is a trading strategy clinic. Right, so a trading strategy clinic is different. It's a little bit different from the live trading sessions, right? And the difference is that it's a little bit more interactive. We kind of encourage you guys to ask questions regarding your trading strategy. Okay, so that's one of the things that we're doing here at Tick Mill. You know, not only providing you the research, you know, what to expect for the week ahead, but what we're also doing is that we want to encourage you to um, clear your doubts with us. If, if you have a trading strategy which you're not sure, you're not sure about, you want us to kind of diagnose for you, today is the perfect day for you to um, to use, uh, to use let us know. Sagar, you're asking uh, which strategy do you use the most? Um, personally, I'm a scalper. So I I trade using Fibonacci Confluence. Right? Uh, I'll share, if, I will share with you. All right? I'll have uh, my teammates share with you later a little bit more about like uh, how you can trade with this thing called Fibonacci Confluence. Right? Um, trading strategy I have is scalping. Scalping essentially means you get in and out to trade fast, right? Um, it differs from day trading. Day trading, you tend to hold a trade and close it off by the end of the day. Don't hold it overnight. And swing trading, you hold a trade overnight, right? So depending depending on your trading, uh, on your time commitment, you know, how much time you have in a day, right? Um, and depending on your lifestyle, right? Then you decide what trading strategy suits you, right? I can tell you that, you know, uh, a scalping strategy works great. But if you can only commit like 20 minutes a day or 30 minutes a, a day trading, you know, it's not going to be effective for you. You need to find one that suits your lifestyle. All right. So most people, if they have a little bit of time in the morning, a little bit of time at night, right, day trading or swing trading is more ideal for you. Okay. Yeah. But uh, the things that you can ask is not only strategy, but, you know, if you're combining different indicators, right, um, maybe you realize that you're combining too many lagging indicators. So you need to throw in a little bit of a lead, uh, a few leading indicators, uh, in certain cases, I've seen people combine too many oscillators, right? They have the stochastic, they have the RSI, they have the MACD, right? It's too many oscillators, you know, it's, um, it, you have too much bias on one style of uh, indicators. So maybe you need to throw in a few momentum indicators, um, you know, to balance things out, all right? So that is, the, um, uh, that is the purpose of the strategy clinic, right? Just to really clarify adopts with us, right? Um, 
going through yes of course i'm going through technical analysis today uh we'll be going through some uh, uh some setups which uh some pretty nice setups that we have now without further ado right let's begin today's session i just want to point you to a few places take me right take me has launched this thing called the take me traders club all right if you go to take you want to go to client tools right and you notice at the bottom here is this thing called take me traders club it's a nice little place where you can hang out with us. Not, not only with me, right? But with the other traders, right? Uh, you've seen them around, you know, you've seen Sarah around, you've seen Yongjin around, you've seen Jindao around, right? You can find us all in the Tick Mill Traders Club, right? It's a nice little place where we share our latest news, market insights, trading discussions, right? You even have nice little notifications that appear when someone, uh, you know, when we ping you, when we let you know that there's a nice setup coming. And the key thing is that you don't need to trade solo anymore. You know, don't need to trade alone, right? In the Take New Traders Club, you get to trade with us. You get to run your trading ideas by us. You get to see our trading ideas, right? And it helps you become a better trader. Because what I'm teaching you today, right? It's just going to be a one-hour session, right? And the next time you see us, maybe it's one week from now, right? In between, you want to practice, okay? In between, you need to kind of, you know, uh, sharpen your, your, your eggs, uh, sharpen your, your skills, right? And the best place to do that is in the Take New Traders Club. All right, so you find a few of us inside, Patrick, James, me, a couple of other traders. All you need to do when you have a TickMill account, a live and funded TickMill account, you have access to it. All right, so this is a glimpse of how it looks like when you get inside, right? Once you come in, once you get your account approved um, by, the, um, by the support team, you basically need to register with your TickMill email address that you have your, uh, that you have your TickMill account with, and you'll get access into here. What you notice by the site, you know, if you have um, certain permissions, you get to direct message me, you get a direct message Patrick, you get to send in requests, a little bit of a chit chat over here, right? Um, this is the part where we share the news, right? So any news on the USD, gold and oil, you'll be able to see it inside. And of course, the most exciting part are the charts. So let's say, for example, dollar yen. If you have a question on dollar yen, like for example, I, I noticed there was a bullish breakout on dollar yen. It's taking a while to load the charts. All right. Okay. This was recently. Okay. So dollar yen on the four hour chart. Maybe you're looking at dollar yen. Let's say the one day chart. Well, give it a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. Why is it taking? Okay, we just let it load in the background. Okay, um, once the chart loads, I'll be showing you how you can you you can get the most out of it. Uh, with some of the tools that we have. Yeah, why is it taking so long to load the charts? Are freaking hell, All right? Oh, come on, wait. Uh, okay, I'll let this part load. Anyway, in this in this place, you can see uh there'll be all different research that is being shared by my team. There's me. There's Yongjin. Right, Sarah sharing our trading research insight. So so that Lawrence, you know, asking. Right, we don't only share with you a technical analysis today, but throughout the day, right, <laughs> throughout the week, you know, we will have we will share with you different uh all, all the different technical analysis. All right. Okay, while this loads in the background, right? I'll be showing if, uh, I'll be sharing you guys, right? Uh introducing you guys, right? This is me, right? That's me Leong. So I run uh Everest Fortune Group. We are best FX re uh finalists for best FX and equity research 2019, 2020, 2021. Right. We usually work with the major financial institutions, sharing them where the markets are heading. But we have a special partnership with TickMill where we're bringing guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the stuff that will take a trading to the next level. All right. Later, in a minute, I'm going to pass the time on to Yongjin. Right. He'll be taking you through uh, some of the best setups you found today. Right. He's very heavy into the technical sites, especially Wyckoff, smart, smart money concepts. Right. If you are interested in it, right. He's the best person to ask, all right? Then uh, Sarah will be coming on later. It'll be a first webinar, so go easy on her. Yeah, I think it's the first time you guys will be seeing her, right? She'll be sharing with you some of the top setups too, right? And if you have questions on her approaches to trading, you can similarly ask her about it, all right? Now, anyway, I'm not, we'll, we'll, when this loads, we'll show it to you, right? Maybe it's getting a little bit of <laughs> high traffic now or something, right? But yeah, once it loads, uh, they will show it to you. I'll now pass on the time, right? I'll pass on the time to Yongjin, who will take you through some of the setups that you found today. And please don't hold back when you have any questions regarding the setups that you found, especially more technical setups. Okay, 
Uh, Young Chin, over to you. All right. Okay. Hey guys, guys. Hey, welcome there. Hey, hi, hi. Hi everyone. So yeah, my name is Yong Sing. So yeah, thank you Desmond for the introduction. So I'm going through technical analysis today and especially I'll be going through a trade recap on a trade that I took on Euro dollar earlier on. So yeah, first let's start off with the DXY chart. Okay, let me get everything up. Okay. Okay, DXY. Okay, so last week we actually had the NFP data release that actually happened. So look right here at 8.30 p.m. So roughly right here, we, had, we actually had the NFP data release. So I'll just draw a line through the chart. NFP data release. So the data was better than expected. So you actually look at Forex Factory. It, the data was actually quite crazy. It was pretty, pretty crazy. So looking right here. So previously there was 260K, forecast 193K, but the actual was 517K. So it was actually more than double of the forecast. So it was actually very, very good for the DXY, for the US dollar. So you can see from here, the US dollar actually shot up very, very strongly. Shooting upwards towards the... So I'm actually going to move on towards the maybe the four-hour chart. So likely we can see DXY head towards this overlap resistance right there. So it's at around the 103... 0.620 area. So it's roughly a short little distance away. So at the moment, I'm still very, very bearish on the other currencies like the euro dollar. So I'll just write this down right there. Let me get the box. Okay. So it was way better than expected. So it was 517k versus 193k. Is it 193k? Right. Okay, 517. Okay. Way better than expected, causing price to shoot up. So let's move on to the euro dollar. Okay. Euro USD. Okay, first and foremost, I'll be looking at the daily chart on the euro dollar. So if you actually look right here, very, very closely, there's actually a overlap support right here, noted by this week. So I'll just move on for hours. Maybe it will be clearer for you guys. So roughly right here, there's an overlap support. We can possibly expect price to head down towards that area if the DXY continues to strengthen. So let me just do a quick recap on the trade setup that I took earlier on. So as you guys know, I'm actually using smart money concepts. So I just sent the I just sent the text already in the in the group chat. So you guys can actually research YouTube on what am, am I actually talking about. So next, since my bias was very, very bearish on the DXY on the daily chart. So we already have two bearish candles. Two bearish candles. So it would actually make more sense to actually continue looking for shots towards the downside. Because if you are looking for a buy, normally we have something called a three black crows. So this is the, possibly the setup that is occurring right now. So moving back down towards the one hour chart. So I actually skipped the entire Asian session. So what I did was I actually drew the Asian session line out the areas. So until 3 p.m. right there. So roughly until right there, we had the Asian session. So I'll just remove the extended box. Okay, let me get this area out. I normally skip the Asian session just because uh, based on, you know, ICT concepts, smart money concepts is actually a consolidation range. So I usually avoid the Asian, Asian session and based on my back test, based on my personal trades that I've taken, I usually, most of the time, uh, take a loss when I trade during Asian. So it's from 
7 p.m. New York time to 12 a.m. New York time. So let me change the timing first to New York. So it's 7 p.m. up to 12 a.m. So I'll label it out nicely. So it's the Asian session. All right. So just let me make it clear again. The timing happens from 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. New York time. So I labeled this area out and then I waited until the London session actually occurred. So the London session usually occurs at the when it's 2 a.m. New York time. So right now we are currently within the London session is up to 6 a.m. Okay, so just now I actually took a trade on the five finish charts. So how do I actually do that? So if you notice that just now I already said the bias is bearish, maybe I should write it out on the chart. So bias for today, bearish towards, where am I bearish towards? So if I actually move on towards the, okay, let me, make this larger oh my i think i just cleared the text let me rewrite it bearish bias towards so i'll get that area out first so i'm actually looking for price to continue heading down towards the daily swing low right there so we have quite a nice swing low that potentially price can clear out. So it's towards this area. 1.07662. Okay, let me highlight it so it's nicer. Okay, let me move on back towards the five minutes chart. So just now, when the Asian session ended, so maybe I should draw a line, okay, 2 p.m. right here. That's when the London session began. So I actually noticed that price actually took out the relative equal highs. So what do I mean by relative equal highs? Which it actually means the liquidity hotspots that are available right here. So you draw a very nice line right from there to there. So I'll just make it bolder. You actually can see that the relative equal highs right here. Okay, let me get this out. Right here, here, and here were actually cleared before price actually went down and broke structure right there. So where is the structure? Where did the structure get broken? So if I actually draw a line, let me get the line out, the arrow. So my point of interest was right here. So this was actually the last swing low that caused price to clear out the liquidity before heading down, break structure, and retrace back up. All right. So I'll just label it out. So this is the BOS, the break of structure okay next i actually waited for a retracement so looking at the 15 minutes chart i actually saw a pretty nice fair value gap so what is a fair value gap is essentially a market inefficiency market imbalance that's located right here so it's a pretty pretty nice gap so i actually waited for the retracement I actually took a shot right here, exactly at 1.07917 with my stop loss above the recent high. And then I wanted to take profit down at the 1.07662 area. So I actually, just being very honest, I actually closed out my trade early. Where did I close out my trade? I actually closed it out right here. Why? Because if I was holding the trade, you notice what happened. Price was pretty, pretty choppy during the entire London session. Price went up, 
hit my entry, went back down. So I thought I thought at this point, I would likely, you know, price could continue heading towards my take profit targets. But then price actually reversed back up. So at this point, I hadn't, I haven't set my break even. So I was holding on to the trade. I was just watching what price will do. So I noticed that price actually rejected the area once more, went back down and I decided to close it out right there. Why am I closing it out right there? Because there is relative equal lows. So I'm very, very afraid that price might tap into that area and then bounce right back up, you know, possibly clearing the high right there. So that's what I was afraid of. So I actually closed out my trade early. So this was my trade. This is how it looked like. Price went up to there, closed it out. So luckily I was kind of right. So if I was still holding the trade right now, what would happen? Price would just bounce back up nearly towards my entry, bounce back down, and it's now frolicking around the entire area. So I'm pretty, pretty glad that I actually closed out the trade. So even if the trade just goes down and, you know, decides to hit my take profit target at 1.07662, it doesn't matter because I've already taken, you know, I've already secured the bag, secured the profits. So I, I'm probably out of the market today. I'm already up 0.3%. That was my target for the day already. So my target per day is actually 0.2% on the account. So having a 0.2% per day on my account, I actually will be netting 1% per week. So it's actually a very, very realistic target. I'm not risking 3% per trade. I'm actually risking roughly 0.2 to 0.5% per trade. All right. Okay, next. Let me take a look at Go. So yeah, just before I continue, any questions so far? So I see a lot of you guys are just watching. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. So I so I see Sumit. So I see Sean, Saga, Roberto, Primitava, Tagalog. So I Tagalog, I, are you from the Philippines? Am I right? So we have Nuku, we have Nisa Ahmed, we have Navin Kumar, Michael Truckis, Melvin Jinjo, Maroon Karam, Marcelo K. Reese Jensen, Ria Lee, Lawrence Okine, John Francis, Joyro, Joe, Jane, HP. Okay, we have too many people, so I think I'll just I'll just stop reading the names. Hey, hi there. Hey, you are okay, you are from South Africa, Cape Town. All right, so I'll go through uh, Euro JPY. Okay, Euro JPY. Okay, let me clear out the chart first. So I'll just move back towards the daily chart. Okay, this is actually quite a quite a very, very choppy price action right here. So just a quick glance, we actually have a relative equal high right there on Euro JPY. So it's actually denoted by the area right here, right here, and right here. So potentially we can expect price to continue bullish to actually clear out the area right there. Okay, next I'll move on towards the four hours charts. Okay, just looking at the four hours charts, you actually notice that price has came back down. Why is it coming back down towards? Likely it's going to retest this overlap support right there. So I'll label it out quite cleanly. So it's the resistance level. So likely we can see a continued buy position when price steps into the support. You know, move on to the smaller time frames. Do not just snipe your entry. Do not just put a buy limit right there. Buy limit, then your stop loss. Where are you going to put your stop loss? Your stop loss cannot be here. Why? Why can you not? Why can't your stop loss be there? Because we actually have a market inefficiency right here. So there's actually a gap in the market right there. So if you actually draw right here, price could potentially tap into the support, into your entry, and then wick all the way down, clearing out your stop loss, clearing out the market inefficiency before price continues. Moving bullish to the upside, that could be a possible trade scenario. Okay, next I'll just move down towards the 
Yes, yes. As in fair value gap. You are exactly right. Uh, Tusha Mahajan. Yes, that's fair value gap. So I didn't want to actually, you know, make it so complicated because many viewers, some of you guys do not understand smart money concepts. Some of, some of you guys do not understand fair value gap. So for an ICT concept, it's a fair value gap. So you can also call it a market inefficiency, market imbalance. There are so many names for it. Market imbalance or market inefficiency. Many names for it. So yeah, you are right about it. Okay, what I would do is I would likely, this would be the best case scenario. So let me draw the line. Let me get the extended arrow. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Let me check if this is the arrow. No, it isn't. Okay, let me find it. Give me a moment. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, I don't think it's... I'm not sure why it's not here. Never mind. Likely, I would like for price to go up. Tap in. Have a break of structure right there before it retraces back down again and possibly continue bullish. So that's the best case scenario that I'm actually looking at. Okay, next, I, I would likely move on towards the one hour time frame. Okay, looking at the one hour time frame, price is still moving pretty bearish, although the overall, you know, the overall, if you actually move out, the overall bias is still very, very bullish. So potentially, if you are looking for shorts, which I do not recommend you to go, go against the market, there's actually a relative equal high, a uh, relative equal low right there. So potentially, you can see price continue bearish towards the fair value gap, towards the market imbalance, market inefficiency area. So, okay, that's about it. So, likely I move on five minutes, you know, five minutes just to check what's going on. Okay, on the five minute chart, we can see a very, very clear relative equal low right here. It's actually at the, let me get the line out. So, it's actually the 141.988. So, 142, just to make it simple as that. So, it's a nice round number, 142. So it's not far away actually. Okay, where's the shortcut? Okay, it's about maybe five pips, nine pips. Yeah, about six, seven pips away. So it's not that far apart. If you are looking for shots now, I think it's a bit too late to short. Because if you take a shot now, you try to short now, you know, enter by market, your stop loss, where will it be? You will likely be up there. Your risk to reward isn't that great. So it's actually a negative risk to reward, negative. So it's a 0 0.23 risk to reward. So if I actually drag it down towards the support level that I just mentioned just now, the overlap supports, your risk to reward will still be in the negative. It will still be 0 0.75 risk to reward. Please at least take a 1 to 1 risk to reward trade. Okay, next. Okay, I've just answered your question, Liz Jensen. So next, I'll, I'll just continue going on to GU, Elvin. GBP, USD. Okay, wow. GBP, USD is just very, very bearish. So maybe I'll just move on towards the daily chart. Just take a look at what is going on. So just judging by this real quickly, we actually have a possible double top, you know, a retail formation that might potentially happen. Price might head towards this demand area right there. Potentially head back down. That could be a possible trade setup. But let me look at the look at the intermediate, you know, the day trading type of setups that we want. So likely in the long run, we can potentially look for price to clear out this previous swing low right there. But at the moment, I'll just move on towards the 4-hour chart. Maybe using supply and demand. This could be a demand area that I'm looking at to take profit if I'm in, the sh if I'm in shorts. Demand. 
Okay. So I'll just clear out the previous swing low line. My attention will be focused on this demand zone. So I'll just write this down bearish towards this area. Bearish bias towards this area right, right there. Okay, next. Maybe I should move on towards the one hour chart. So looking at the one hour chart, price has just recently cleared the liquidity right there. So if I draw a line, you notice that price has cleared the previous high before it rejected strongly towards the downside. So the next area price can potentially clear is this nearest low right here. Price can potentially clear. Okay, it just went into that area. So likely clear, retrace back up and continue shorting towards the downside. So what I like to do when price closes, you know, very, very strongly below this line right there. I'll start moving on towards the 30 minute charts and then I'll start marking out all the fair value gaps, the market inefficiencies or the market imbalance right here. So just a quick look. If price closes below this line, I'll be marking out this two area. So that area is the fair value gap. So potentially you can look for shorts right there. Simply I'll mark it out. Mark, I'll just write there as market imbalance. So it's easier for everyone to understand. So potentially price closes below, take a short stop loss above the previous high risking 32 pips and aim for the demand area right below. So it's roughly a one to three risk to reward trade, 107 pips trade, but also do watch out for fundamental news events that might occur anytime. So for GBP USD, let me take a look at Forex Factory. So non-GBP USD. Okay, we actually at 9.30 p.m. later, we have the hour, uh, average hour, hourly learning earnings. Is it? Okay, no, no. My bad, my bad. My bad. Okay, today. Okay, we do not have ma any major news for today. So construction PMI, nah, that doesn't affect anything. Doesn't affect much. Okay, consumer sentiment, retail sales negative. So likely it might cause some sentiment, okay, the retail sentiment for Euro might continue to push Euro towards the downside, which can also affect JBP. So the construction PMI was lower than the previous one. So likely for today, we can see GU moving, okay, a GBP USD continue moving towards the downside. Okay, that's about it from me. So I just draw a line. So it's very, very clear cut. Price grabbed liquidity right there. Push down, retraced, and continued to push down. So what I want to see is price close below. Hit back up, retest, and continue. Bearish. So any questions so far? Any questions so far? Do let me know in the chat. So if you want to improve your trading strategy, if you want to improve your chart drawings, feel free to actually screenshot. So the screenshot button is actually located on the top right hand corner of the screen. So it's under take a snapshot, the camera button. Click on it, copy link to the chart image, and then you can actually paste it right there like I just did in the group chat. Okay, Summit, you said all clear. All right. Okay, so Elvin, that will be it for GBP USD. Okay, any more questions? Give me a moment. Okay. All right. Okay, you want... Okay, Mehron, uh, Karam, you asked whether I can explain more about the liquidity zone. Well, okay, let me find a good example. So I usually trade Euro-Dollar, so I'm more familiar with the Euro-Dollar. Okay, price has just hit my take profit target. Okay, well, it's fine. I've already taken profit. So I was roughly... Okay, it was 8 pips away. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, let me find 
a liquidity zone. There's clear cuts. Okay, a liquidity can be a previous. Can be a previous swing low or high that has been taken out. So an example of a, a previous swing low or swing high that has been taken out, this previous low right here. The moment it got taken out, price reacted very, very strongly. So price tapped, cleared this area out and rejected towards the upside. That is liquidity. So we also have something called relative equal highs or lows. So spotting a relative equal high. I've already spotted one right here. So I'll just zoom in very, very clearly for you guys to see. So if I actually draw a line, you notice that the wicks are of relative equal highs. So take notes right here. Relative equal highs located right there. The moment price went up to clear out this liquidity, it actually rejected and reversed very, very strongly towards the downside. So yeah, that's another example. Let me find an, another example of a relative equal low. Let me find it. Okay, looking right here, there's quite a nice relative equal low right here denoted by these two weeks right here. So you just take a look at the keyword that I'm using, relative equal low. I'm not saying that it's a, it confirmed to be of equal low, it's relative. So it's roughly equal low. So if you're looking for shorts, let's say if you're looking for short already, you can potentially start to take profit at the equal low. Why do I take profit at the relative equal low or, or relative equal high? Price can potentially bounce back up towards my entry. Like I've shown, it actually bounced back up very, very closely if I actually did not close out the trade. So I would always close out at the liquidity hotspots. So right here, same thing. If you are in a long position, you notice that price soon started to form relative equal high. So let's say you have actually you actually had a previous take profit target somewhere right there. But you have to watch as soon as the market starts to form relative equal highs. I would have already closed out my trade the moment price taps and clears the high. So price actually reversed very strongly back down. So I show you the most recent one, just a trade recap. So just now I did mention I closed out my trade right here because of this relative equal lows. Okay, let me get the two brush two out. So price tapped in. I closed out my trade before price frolicked around a bit before it. Shot right back up. Close to my entry point. My entry point was at the 900 area. So roughly my entry point was that it could have potentially hit my break even or even my stop loss, which is higher up. So this was my entry. Oh, something like rounding top pattern is also appearing here. So yeah, is, that's cool. That's cool. Can you send me your chart for the rounding top pattern? So I think it's roughly right here. Am I right? Let me see. Just take a look. Okay, you don't have a chart. Okay, if you if you if you manage to ma get hold of a chart, you know, of a of a computer or even your phone, you can actually screenshot it down and show me where do you see your rounding top pattern, and maybe I can actually give your give my opinion on it. So rounding top pattern, as in you are talking about this. All right. Hey, that's that's nice. That's nice. Glad you spotted it. So I guess that's your style of trading. So you actually use patterns. How would you have entered the trade? Where would you have entered that trade? Okay, almost. Well, not bad. Almost the same thing that we are looking at. Just below consolidation. 
So you're talking about this entire area as a consolidation zone that you're talking about this retest. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, great. We are on the same page. Okay. Okay, now I'll just move, I'll just pass on the time to Sarah. So I guess it's the first time you guys are going to be seeing her. You guys will be seeing her for the next few times, the next few sessions. So I'll just welcome Sarah. She'll take over for the remaining part of the session. Any questions, feel free to let her know. And she'll be going through the trade analysis that she has actually been looking through. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah. So this is my uh, first webinar with you guys. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, look at the Aussie and Aussie, you, Aussie dollar and uh, Kiwi dollars. Hi, thank you. So let me take my track up. Okay, let's take a look at the first currency, which is Aussie, uh, Aussie dollar. Where is my Aussie dollar? Sorry, give me a moment. I cannot find my first car thing. Oh, here. Hey, let's remove all my drawings. So we started as a new, fresh new. Okay, so what I like to do when doing tra uh, during trading, okay, so firstly, I will look at the four hour time frame and I will take a uh, over, uh, I will take a look at the um, overall, uh, how the price has been true. So as you can see, the price actually is ascending in a very nice way in very long-term perspectives. And just, uh, I think uh, this weekend or like this Friday, last Friday, the price, there is a, uh, there is a change in market stru structure and the price now is hitting down. So let's zoom in a little bit. We can see this. Before that, there is a very nice ascending channel. Okay. Let's adjust a little bit, okay? So you can see since um, 3rd January, the start of this year, the Aussie and uh, Aussie dollar has keep uh, increasing the price. And until recently, it's, the ascending channel has been break through. So which means there is a change in market uh, uh, structure. So as the current price is here, okay? So and the price now is below Ichimoku clock. My view of this currency pair is um, uh, uh, bearish, no longer bullish. 
So maybe what I like to do is, so my trading strategy is I will not enter in the uh, trade at the current price. What I like to do if I sell it, I will enter it at like more higher price than the current price. If I long it, okay, so I will enter it at uh, much uh, lower price, lower than the current price. So as you can see, the price is here. There is a very good line here, which is the support line. Okay, you can see current price is now about 0 0.68951. And it's trying to break through the first support, which is at 0 0.68721. So this is our first uh, support line. And second support line, I'm looking at this level. which is a previous uh, swing low. In terms of resistance, I will find it somewhere like this range. Okay, I noticed there are like, uh, the candlestick has pumping up the line, so let's highlight it. Oh, it's here. Oops, sorry. Remember, always mark up the uh, importance price and important zones. So let's mark up this. Okay, so what I like to do is I try to find the, um, I try to prove whether my support line is significant enough. So I will always using Fibonacci retracement. So from left to right from the, okay. So actually you can see there is 15% Fibonacci line, which is just nice. Let's zoom in a little bit. You see it's just nice as touching the uh, current price now. So what I like to do because my overview for this uh, Aussie and dollar is bullish, which means the price will uh, drop some more. I will not enter in the trade at this point, okay, I will look only looking for if the price has breaking this support line. So what I'm doing to do is most likely I will enter in the tree somewhere just before uh, lowering the price is lower than the first support line. This is my cell entry. Okay, so most likely I would like entering on trade here because at this time of stage, maybe the price will uh, rebound back. So I would like to uh, further confirmation before I enter in the trade. I always remember to put your stop loss. Okay, this is a very significant lesson that I have learned uh, during the first year of my trading. So at first year my trading, I always uh, lazy to put stop loss because I feel like my uh, view was correct, was handling. Sorry, my, my view was correct. So I didn't put stop loss. Then in the end, all my money has gone. Sarah, you have removed it. Okay, so this is my cell entry. Let's make this clear. Uh, so we are just using the 15% Fibonacci. Let's remove other things.
Okay, so what I like to do, I will enter in cell entry here, maybe take profit at this place. Hi, somewhere here. Okay, why I didn't and uh, take profit at second support because I am a more um, I don't want like I just want like very straightforward. Uh, the the price hit this uh point. So remember always to put your stop loss. So maybe my stop loss will be the. Recent okay. Hey. Sorry. Okay, I will, so this is my trade analysis for Aussie dollars. Sell entry below the first support or below the 15% Fibonacci retracement. Take profit at uh, price around uh, 0 0.67 and stop loss about uh, at the price 0 0.70. So at, as you can see, this one, the risk reward ratio is about 1.1. Mm, which, which for me is quite safe. Okay, so I'm a like more safe player. I don't like take like a lot of risk to to do to enter in a trade. Okay. So what I like to do here is Let's take a look at another currency pair, which is Kiwi dollars. Okay. As you can see, Kiwi dollars is almost similar as Aussie dollars. So they are very correlated, which means when the uh, Aussie has go up, the Kiwi also go up. And Kiwi go down, the Aussie also go down. So once you, sh uh, you show uh, Aussie dollars, I mean, you only can short, uh, you can short Kiwi dollars. You cannot like long for the Kiwi dollars. Same, same here, you can see there is a very uh, nice trade lines for the past one month. And now the, uh, the price is breaking through the trade line, which is here, let's draw the trade line. Okay, if you want, you also can draw it as a, uh, uh, Ascending channel, but uh, is the I mean are uh, the same as uh Aussie dollar. So as you can see, the price has uh go down below the Ichimoku clock, and now also break the trend line, which indicate a change in market structure. So my overall bar bar bias for uh Kiwi dollars is now is from bullish is turning bearish. So you can see the current price is at 0 0.63, about 0 0.63. So what I like to do is I try to use Fibonacci to find my support and resistance. Let's see. Okay, my first uh resistance can be at this place. This is my first resistance. As you can see, the price is a very um uh, key resistance. 
request is. As you can see, the price has uh, tried to break through this one and I am able to break through this one, almost break, uh, almost touching it, but not yet. And this one touch, but did not break through. Okay, so as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, four touches is significant enough to show that the resistance is only is uh, at a very key level. So because my strategy is I don't want entering the trade now, okay? So most likely I will put a sell entry at the price. in line with 15% Fibonacci or like mm, slightly below also can. Okay, so this is my first, this is my cell entry. Okay. Oh, oh if, I sorry, I drawn it on the wrong line. Okay, so this is my cell entry. And I will take profit at somewhere in line with 17. This will be my um, take profit. Okay, it's time to end the webinar. So maybe next time I will share with you, uh, share more about Kiwi dollars. Okay, we will be ending the webinar now. Thank you for joining. Okay, any questions I will ex uh, explain in the next webinar. Okay, all right. So guys, so thank you for joining. So yeah, any more questions, feel free to ask us in the Traders Club. So the Traders Club is right here. So feel free to ask it right here. So I'll send the link to the chat so you guys can actually check it out. So the Traders Club, just now actually Desmond was talking about it. So you can actually, focus, or you can actually talk about this. Uh, let's say resistance area. So let's say I draw a line right here. So I'll just draw in roughly an overlap resistance. So I'll just highlight this area out. So I'll just click on it, link object to text. So I can click on it, confirm. So everybody will know what I'm talking about. Resistance area where price might reverse back down from. So roughly like that take a look where I click view discussion. So when I highlight the resistance area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you guys can actually send your analysis there also using the same tools that we are using. So please make use of the Tick Mills Traders Club. So thank you very much for joining today. I'll see you guys in the next session. Ain't no problem there, Tusha Mahajan. All right, bye guys, take care. So I'll press...